Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with a gentleman who is um, truly a Broadway legend. He uh, began his songwriting career in 1926, even though he didn't really start writing his uh, major output uh, until the 1940s. Julie Stein has more hit songs to his credit than any other living composer. After writing a number of extraordinary hits for Hollywood in the 40s, primarily with Sammy Kahn and Frank Lesser, he went to Broadway, beginning with High Button Shoes, and then he continued to write such classic sh uh, shows as Gypsy, uh, Bells Are Ringing, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Funny Girl, and many, many others. And Peter Pan. And Peter Pan, yes, and Peter Pan. <laughs> Welcome, Julie Stein. Thank you for all those nice things. Well, it's all but true. But they're all true. Okay. <laughs> Every bit of it is true. You know, good words make good songs. Yes. Well, you've worked with the best lyricists. Well, before. yes. But there were so many hits that you produced. Now, when you were writing then, did you work to produce hit songs? Was that the objective? Or we was... just wrote songs. We just loved writing. I loved writing. I used to pick Sammy Kahn going up to the studio, and every morning when I picked him up, he gave me a little slip, like a laundry strip, and I put it in my pocket, you know. And I came home one day, and they got a lot of laundry. So I picked this one. Uh, all right, this is lyrics. First eight bars, lyrics. And what were on some of those, uh, those laundries? Let it snow, five minutes more, <laughs> you know. And, uh, oh, uh, well, one of my favorites, which you actually wrote. We for. used to say, walk in, our publishers say, may I say another hit? <laughs> <laughs> Throw the music in the door, you know. Well, how about a few bars of a hit, like Time After Time? that I'm Julie Stein. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Great, Julie. Julie, I'd like to discuss the, uh, the process that is involved in creating a Broadway show. There are so many different kinds of songs that you have to use. And well, it starts with collaboration. First of all, no one man does a Broadway show. It's a collaboration between the lyric writer, the composer, the director, the scenic designer, the choreographer, and the orchestration, the orchestrator. And then the an star. It's a, it's a collaborative effort. Uh, everyone has an input. Now, uh, now with Gypsy, let's use Gypsy as an example. Yes. Uh, I'd like to go through the different kinds of songs that you write for a Broadway show. Uh -huh. Now, of course, the first, first thing that you have to write, not necessarily in that order, but you have to have a good opening number. Uh, yeah. Now, in Gypsy... I had a good opening number. Some people. Knitting sweaters and sleeves. Bad looking for some people who don't know their little life. But I'm gonna try. And that's that. And then you gotta have a ballad like. have a dance number.
go with them if she'll just appear. We'll take this big time. Anyhow, here, set this. Let's take okay. you out of range. I want you to get there. For a while! <laughs> you said you wrote that with Fred Astaire in mind. That's right. I wrote, in fact, this is a secret. I wrote all my big songs. Fred Astaire with Forgive Me, my favorite singer of all singers. Fred Astaire is your favorite of... Uh, yeah, well, so all my, all my songs, now I'll play a little, just a few of my Fred Astaire songs. All right. <laughs> for dancers uh this is all i need is a girl uh how about this uh i'll never get away from it of course now now that song of course that melody you originally wrote for ruggles of red gap yeah that doesn't it matter it's still worse that fred astaire song this is a lovely thing i did ever wrote with peter pan Channing, whom you discovered, yeah. but of course you also discovered Barbara Streisand. Right. Hadn't you gone to hear her at a nightclub? Yes, I. Uh, <clears throat> I went down to the village. I think I forget the name of it. Francois or the village the I, I don't know which one it was, but I went down there and heard this girl, and I was mesmerized. I never heard anything like that in my life. I went 27 nights in a row because I, I already had written the score for Funny Girl. And you had. I didn't found write it after Barbara. The score was written before her Barbara. Did you write anything for her after you met No, her? nothing. Well. Nothing. But I met, when I heard it, and I heard, sitting there listening to her, I put the whole score, and I heard her singing my score, you know, because it was a, we had an Anne Bancroft originally, you see, and ba Anne Bancroft said, uh, got angry with me because uh, she said, you, we worked together rehearsing me for about three weeks, and you know the range of my voice. How can you, you'll never find, she said to Robbins, Jerome Robbins, she said, you'll never find a girl who can act and sing this score. There right. isn't a, and so Robbins said, well, if we don't, we still have the score. We'll start from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you told me a story about Judy Holliday, that in order for her to learn the middle section of The Party's Over, which was a counter melody sort of thing, you had to teach it to her as the melody of the song because yes. she said she couldn't learn a counter melody. That's right. I so taught you tricked her as a her. separate song. Right. I taught her the, the, the song that I tricked her with was a Long Before I Knew You. Long Before I Met You. Thought I was sure I'd find you somewhere, someday. And the song she was going to sing was uh, The Party's Over. Right. So. You do it. No, you. Uh, you do, uh, you, you do the party's over. The party's over. Long before I met you, it's time to go. Yeah, so you use the long those lines. Oh, that's great. <laughs>